Live from Liverpool, the dark paranormal. Season 10. Hi everyone and welcome to The Dark Paranormal, episode 9 of season 10. Yes, it's the penultimate episode of this season already, and I genuinely can't believe how quickly this season's flown. In just one week's time, we will have our season finale, and it is the story that we hoped we could have given you mid-season. And I know from your correspondence that quite a few of you can't wait to hear what we've got in store. And believe me, it's well worth the wait. And once again, a huge thank you to the contributor of next week's finale for coming to a compromise with me to ensure that their truly dark paranormal experience gets out to you, wonderful listeners. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. We have the not-so-small matter of today's penultimate episode of Brianna's True Paranormal Experience. And believe me, not only will this story potentially have you leaving the lights on tonight, but it also goes to prove that the darkest of paranormal entities can be in the most surprising and unlikely of places. But before we reach Brianna's true paranormal experience, we of course need to say a big thank you to our wonderful team over at Patreon. When you sign up to Patreon... Not only will you receive these episodes both ad-free and before everyone else, but you can also receive exclusive access to our Patreon-only podcast, Dark Bites. Dark Bites is a show which runs each and every week of the year, even on the downtime between seasons. And as we take our usual three-week break in between seasons following next week's finale, it means you don't have to miss your weekly paranormal fix. Plus, you gain access to the entire back catalogue of Dark Bites episodes, well over 40 hours worth of Patreon-only content to binge. We've built a wonderful community of like-minded paranormal enthusiasts over at Patreon, and we'd like to extend an exclusive invitation just for you. Simply head over to patreon.com forward slash thedarkparanormal just like these wonderful new team members have. Maria Briggs, Karen Walker, Tracy Caithness, Joshua Gore, Faith Shaw, Melissa Smith, Megan Data, Forte Annie, Sarah Townsend, Craig Peacock, Dylan Bonemma, Lauren Mansoy, A. McKenna Rusted, Jake Wright, SM Fisher 91, Casey, Cathal McDermott, Chloe Sampled, Rich Balch, Bridget Waddell, Jessica Gilbert, Flavia Freitas, Alyssa Short, Reese Overbay, Mary Thomas, Alyssa Cody Garcia, Jess Brooks, Andy Gorin, Samantha Carolan, Lottie Ann Sloniker, Julie Matson, William Torres, Emily Jones, Alo Jeans, Sabina Herbar Tanar, Melanie, Tina Castry, Mary Ann Wolfington, Lynn Lockwood, RT381 Treble 2, Holly Joel Turner, Sharon McPhee, Cheryl Bozaki, Annabelle Prather, Bandicoot, Courtney Topley, Pleontody, Megan Burwell, and Amy Newlands. Thank you so much for choosing to support the show. I hope you enjoy all the ad free episodes, the Dark Bite content, and of course, you'll be the first to hear the season premiere of season 11. And so, if you'd like to join the team over here, head over to patreon.com forward slash the Dark Paranormal. Speaking of Season 11, I'll be working on that, obviously, during our three-week break, and we do have all of our slots filled. However, as you will know if you're a long-time listener, we always make space for the right story. And so, if you have a true paranormal experience that you would like to receive the Dark Paranormal treatment, either email it in to thedarkparanormal at hotmail.com or visit our website, thedarkparanormal.com, and click the Contact Us link. But right now, it's time to lower those lights, make yourself comfortable, and of course, leave your disbelief at the door, as we hear all about a demon in disguise. My name is Brianna, and this story is one that tends to seem rather long, but nevertheless is filled with the type of experiences that will forever keep me horrified of being alone by myself, especially at night. 
For context, I live in a smaller town in Minnesota, which I've basically lived in my entire life. My parents' home was a typical 1970s built home, which, at first sight, had nothing particularly old or scary about it. Or so I thought. The ten acres of land which encompassed the home was heavily wooded, with tall, skinny pine trees all in long rows. There was a horse pasture and a few other small buildings scattered around the property. It was my ninth grade summer leading to tenth grade when it all started. My room was once part of the entire living room, but a wall had been put up to create the separate room. This meant it was oddly close to the kitchen, but also on the other side of the one-level house, away from my parents' and my sister's rooms. I used to stay up way too late, being a dumb teenager, always on my phone when everyone else was sleeping. One night, after a good hour or so of scrolling through my phone, I was finally ready to get to sleep. When... A faint tapping came from the wall right behind my head. I really didn't think anything of it, but it was constant. I soon fell asleep and didn't really think about it the next day. Once again, with my nightly routine, I headed to bed after everyone else had been asleep for hours, most likely around 2 or 3 a.m. in the morning. And as I tucked myself into bed, the familiar tapping noise continued in the weird pattern. I decided, since I'd watched a scary movie in the previous week, which had a similar situation in it, that I would try and tap back a different beat. Why I did this, I have no idea. I was young, dumb, and thought it wouldn't do anything. So I lifted my hand up, and... Even as I was doing it, I thought, this is stu... It immediately responded with the same beat I'd just done. But... It continued, over and over, until I decided to turn on a movie, raising the volume to drown out the sound and stop it from scaring me. I told my dad and mum the next night. Well, I told them that I thought there was maybe a mouse trapped in the walls, or a leaky pipe, or some other architectural fault. But as soon as my dad would come in, the noise would stop. My mum heard it a few times, but it was always so faint when anyone else was there. As the weeks went on, I kind of got used to it. Until, one night, it seemed to be a bit louder than normal, and my cat, who was at the end of my bed, looked at the wall and hissed. I should add, he was the nicest cat, and I've never heard him make that noise since I've got him. I was now more than a bit scared, so I turned on the TV once more, raising the volume and staying in bed. But as I started drifting off to sleep, the taps, almost as if to respond to my attempts to blank them out turned into what sounded like a hand smacking the wall in anger. Well, I could no longer stay calm, and I moved myself into the living room, turned on the TV and the lights, and tried to get to sleep on the couch. Now, my parents have two cats, one of whom is an angel, but is scared of life itself, and the other is a spawn of Satan, I swear but she liked to crack my door open to go to my huge windows and look out into the woods. Another week or so goes by, and the mean cat comes into my room, and I knew this because my door creaked when she came in. But this time, 
she stopped halfway into my room. Her heckles raised, and she hissed at the foot of my bed and just ran out. A few minutes later, my door fully opened and then slowly closed shut, all by itself. I panicked because I hate my door fully shut, so I got up and opened it. I checked the living room and the kitchen to see if my parents or my sister had gotten up, but nope. They were all fast asleep. Around the next week or so, my sister, my mother and I all had feelings of being watched, hearing doors close when no one else was home. We would also see shadows run across the hallways. We would naturally jump up to investigate each and every time and never find any logical explanation or cause. In the following weeks, my sister began to have what my dad said was night terrors, which she hadn't had in years, and claimed that she was dreaming. My mother seemed deeply concerned, though, but wouldn't tell me or my sister why. When things got so bad that my sister started sleeping in my mum and dad's bed, I finally confronted my mother and asked why she seemed so off lately. I think in the back of my mind, I was scared since the tapping in my wall and the doors closing was still occurring nightly to me in my own room. My mother then told me something I will never forget. She said that every morning recently, my little sister would tell my mum that there was a boy on all fours under her chair in the corner of her room, motionless, staring at her. My mum then went on to tell me that she herself was having that same dream every single night. To keep my sister from being scared, she did not mention that her apparent nightly visitor and my mum's dreams were identical. My mum also told me she swore that one night, minding her own business, doing bits and pieces in the bedroom, something caught her eye outside the bedroom window in the backyard. So she looked out and saw a man standing behind the apple tree. Strange in itself, but especially that late at night. She said this occurred at least once a week. I was overwhelmed and decided to tell my mum all I had been experiencing. The taps, the bangs, how the cats had reacted. And she believed me. It became evident that despite her best efforts to hide it. She had joined me and my sister in being utterly terrified of where we lived. Another event that was the only one my dad ever witnessed was when we were all getting ready for the day and my sister and I were in the kitchen making breakfast for ourselves. My mum had this metal decoration which had happily sat fixed to the wall for the past 15 years. My sister and I were about to tuck into our breakfasts when... The metal decoration flew off the wall with such a force that when it landed, it actually cracked one of the kitchen floor tiles. This was when my dad raced into the kitchen. He quickly surveyed the situation and I noticed a panicked look cross his face because he realised there was no possible way for either of us to have knocked it down, or for one of the cats to do it because it was so high on the doorway. He ended up saying it must have been the wind, even though no windows nor doors to the outside were even open. But I knew better. All this occurred during summer, and now it continued into the beginning of the school year, I was once again up late, well past everyone else, and had just began to fall asleep. 
I suddenly opened my eyes, and to my pure horror, I could not move. Not a single part of my body, but I could move my eyes around in my dark room. Then, as my panic rose, I started to hear this horrible whispering in my right ear, so loud I thought I'd go deaf. All of a sudden, I felt a hand slowly creeping over my mouth, covering it so I couldn't scream. I knew if I was going to get out of this situation, I needed to act now. So I used every ounce of my strength to regain any control, and I managed to bite down on this hand. Only then did it recoil slowly. I started to regain feeling back in my body, so I used my butt to push the thing off my bed, and I heard it hit the floor. I jumped up, screaming, and ran for my door. I ran into my mum and dad's room, bawling, telling them there was someone in my room. My dad jumped up, went in to check my room, and then the whole house. But he eventually dismissed the event as a nightmare, since he could find no one in the home. My mother and sister, however, believed everything I said. So me, my mum, and my sister all slept in the living room for the rest of that year. My dad thought we were nuts. I'd like to take a quick break from the show to talk to you about health. If you're anything like me, you'll feel a pain, you'll do a quick internet search and fall into an immediate panic. Or you'll fall down a social media rabbit hole of questionable advice from so-called experts. In both of those situations, you're extremely unlikely to find quality medical advice. But you can find it from a genuine doctor on ZocDoc. ZocDoc helps you find expert doctors and medical professionals that specialise in the care you need and deliver the experience you want On ZocDoc, finding the doctor that's right for you is seamless. The quality care you need is just a few taps away in the ZocDoc app. ZocDoc is the only free app that lets you find and book doctors who are patient-reviewed, take your insurance, are available when you need them, and treat almost every condition under the sun. Surprise twists may work for this podcast, but they don't work for your medical care. Go to ZocDoc.com slash dark and download the ZocDoc app for free and then find and book a top-rated doctor today. Many are available within 24 hours. That's Z-O-C-D-O-C dot com slash dark. ZocDoc.com slash dark. My mum finally had enough of us all living in fear. And so she contacted a woman in town who was apparently known for dealing with, well, whatever this was. And she was willing to come and help us rid the house of this entity. This was after the entire school year, into my 10th grade going into 11th grade summer. We kept this a secret to this day from my dad, because he already thought we were crazy. And he wouldn't have been happy about us allowing a stranger into our home, let alone want to deal with something he thought we were all imagining. And so she came to our house one morning, and after a quick introduction and a debrief from us regarding the happenings in the home, one of the first things out of her mouth was that she saw a dark mass attached to my mum and me and my bedroom. She did her cleanse throughout the house and told us I would need to come to her house for more cleansings. I didn't trust her, though, since my mum was paying her. But I did it anyway for my mum's sake. In fairness, it did seem to stop the events, but I still never felt right in that house. Years later... I moved into my boyfriend's grandparents' house since we'd began dating. He was a welder and worked night shift, so being up late by myself was normal. His grandma and auntie were in their own room sleeping whilst I sat up with the dog and cat watching a TV show. 
I'm sat there texting my boyfriend since he just finished his shift and I hear a bang and a splash happen in the bathroom down the hall. I'm confused because the animals are next to me and no one had walked by us to use the bathroom. I got up and quickly walked to the bathroom. I turned on the light to find my makeup bag unzipped upside down with all of its contents in the toilet. The crazy part was the seat was up and there were only girls in the house at that time and being the only one up, I had used the bathroom last and I'm a girl so I didn't leave the seat up. I called my boyfriend and told him to get home fast, which he did, most likely because he could hear the fear in my voice. I showed him the state of the bathroom, and he was in shock. We went to bed after cleaning it all up, and ate a late snack and watched a movie to try and calm our nerves. We were just drifting off to sleep when my boyfriend's Xbox remote flies across the bedroom and smashes into the wall. His dog started whimpering and my boyfriend jumped up and turned the light on. We both agreed that night that there was something paranormal going on. I told him my past experiences and I told him I think it had followed me. We had a strange few occurrences after that, such as footsteps walking around our bed and doors opening by themselves but it was still pretty normal at this point and we more or less overcame the fear as it hadn't been malicious for a while. It wasn't until his parents and us moved into a 1922 farmhouse a few towns over. This property had a history since the original owner came from Sweden and had founded a church in this small town with a population of only around 100 people. After we moved in, we did some local investigation and just down the road, we found the original property owner's grave. We'd done some research on who he was and the property itself and we found that the house was built on the same ground as the original owner's home, which they'd built in the mid-1800s. It was an 18 by 30 single level building that housed over 40 people that he'd brought with him. I couldn't help but wonder how many people had passed on the property since they went through a few winters here and were some of the first to establish this area. But what with the history of the property and since he was involved in the church, we loved everything about the place. Not to mention it had 10 acres versus the 1.2 acres we had previously. We all visited the house once before we purchased it, but I didn't have any creepy vibes then and I wasn't scared now. That would change drastically in the upcoming months. The house needed major updating, but we were all willing to make ourselves at home in the meantime. The floors, doors and much of the structure was original, which was awesome, but also, well, slightly ominous. My boyfriend's dad works third shift at an ammunition plant, and my boyfriend's mum worked a 9-5, but the majority of the time she worked late. I was in school and working minimal hours at a dental office, so needless to say, I was home quite a lot alone. I did have my boyfriend's dog, though, so I felt quite safe and secure. One night, my boyfriend gets home at his usual midnight and we stay up for a few hours to catch up on our day and just hang out. We head to bed while watching our favourite TV show at the time. Our room was next to his parents' room and next to theirs was a spare room. Perpendicular to that was the bathroom and a closet. This is all upstairs on the third floor with one set of stairs going down to the main level. I fall asleep, only to be aggressively woken up by my boyfriend saying, there's someone in the house. He said he could hear footsteps downstairs. I'm panicked, 
and I ask what to do. But he grabs his dog and a chunk of metal and opens the bedroom door into the hallway. The dog takes one look at the stairs and starts to bark and growl and try to break free from my boyfriend to go down to the footsteps. My boyfriend quietly goes down for what seems like forever and then walks back up the stairs to our room. I worriedly ask what he found but he states, Everywhere I went, these footsteps, which sounded like cowboy boots, would move to the other side of where I was, never in the same room as me. I even went to the basement, and then I heard them above me on the first floor. So I'd go up, and then they'd be in the back room. I'd go in the back room, and they'd be in the front room. But I didn't find anyone and everywhere seems to be secure. Well, we stayed up for a majority of the night until the sun came up, since we were both scared to death. After this, I started waking up to our closet door turning, like someone was trying to get out. Other nights I would wake up and hide under our covers, as in the darkness, I would hear quick footsteps running around our bed. Once, I even heard someone crawling and moving my water bottles under my bed. Things were happening every night, and it was back to me never getting any sleep with the fear of what was lurking in the dark. I told my mum, and she told me to say my archangel prayer, which was on a card that came with a necklace that I bought at the start of all this in ninth grade. The necklace itself was a sterling silver engraving of an archangel. I would hold it close every night, saying the prayer and hoping all that was going on would stop. My boyfriend was a heavy sleeper, and he had no idea how to stop it all from happening, so he unbelievably didn't seem all that bothered. You may well ask how, and I legit still don't get how he didn't flip out every night. My breaking point was during the summer of 2020, when my boyfriend had just gotten home. We stayed up way too late watching Grey's Anatomy, when I realised we should probably go to bed. I asked him to grab the water bottle and tidy up the kitchen. I went upstairs to go to the bathroom and brush my teeth, and as I get done, I open the bathroom door and I see my boyfriend with his back turned to me with the lights off, and the door cracked slightly open. I say to him, Did you grab the water bottle? And he slowly moved out of sight into the darkness. I say louder this time, Did you not hear me? Did you get the water bottle? But at that moment, as I'm moving towards our room across the upstairs hallway, I hear an aggressive, low voice say, Hey. With a nervous giggle, I ran down the stairs at about four at a time, thinking it was my boyfriend trying to scare me like normal. But as I turned the corner to the last set of stairs, I meet my boyfriend, walking up with the water bottle. I cried so hard, screaming at him that there's someone in our room. He runs in to check and, yet again, finds nothing. After this, the antics still continue, but have never been as bad. I will never forget that voice which haunts me to this day. And my boyfriend will tell you, to this day, he's never seen me so upset. We finally move into a friend's house about a year later, just to get some space from his parents. Now this house is a new development, and was pretty nice. Once we were all moved in, the owners began to worry, as their two young daughters were now having issues sleeping, and were being frightened by their closet. The male owner was quite open to paranormal things, so I told him all that happened, but did say that it doesn't normally bother anyone but me. But with now having two young girls involved, me and my boyfriend decided to go through all of my stuff 
and throw out anything that might be old or have this darkness attached to it. I, being a broke college student, had nothing really to get rid of, so it seemed to be a loss. Until I thought, the only thing I have from living at my parents is that goddamn necklace. The one I thought I'd been using to stay safe. Well, I took it off and I threw it away in the outside garbage just to see what would happen. Well, all things in this house stopped and the girls reported no bad feelings or fear in their room. All was well again. It wasn't until about a week later when I happened to be looking in the back seat of my car that I noticed something shimmering. Moving things out of the way to reach for it, I pulled out, once again, the necklace. How it got back into my car, I will never be able to explain. I asked everybody in the house if they dug in the garbage to give it back to me, thinking maybe I'd binned it by mistake. But everyone said no. I grabbed it in a rage and threw it away one more time. And since, I've yet to have anything happen. This thing tormented me for so many years and showed itself to so many people, I will never know who or what it truly was. But I can say, in my heart, I know it was demonic and always looking to cause fear. I never would have guessed a holy necklace would have been what this thing could be attached to. But I truly do believe that's why it followed me for so many years. Wow, Brianna, thank you so much for submitting your true paranormal experience. It's made for a great penultimate episode for season 10. And it also throws up an interesting question about exactly where demonic entities can hide or attach themselves. Up until your experience came in, I, like you, would have presumed that a religious item would have been safe from such an attachment, but evidently not. And perhaps I shouldn't be surprised, given the words spoken by the former, now deceased, chief exorcist of the Vatican, Father Gabriel Amorth, who, before his passing, is quoted as saying, The devil is pure spirit. Invincible. He is shown with the painful blasphemies coming from the person which he possesses. He can stay hidden. He speaks different languages. He can transform himself. The devil even resides in the Vatican. And so, with the words of a man who performed over 70,000 exorcisms, we'll leave the penultimate episode of season 10. And those words spoken will ring no truer than next week in our season finale. For our Patreons, I'll speak to you on Sunday for another episode of Dark Bites. And for everyone, I'll speak to you next week for episode 10. Until then, remember, when you're discussing the paranormal, always try and leave some of your disbelief at the door. And I'll speak to you next week for the season finale of the dark paranormal.